Right now you can get up to 15 free stocks, each stock valued up to $2,000 a share by using my link in the description below. Right now you could also earn a 5.1% APY on your uninvested cash on Moomoo. So go ahead and check out Moomoo. I'll put a link to them in the description below. Now let's get right into today's video here. So today I want to talk about the Lux Algo Oscillator Matrix Premium Indicator and how to utilize it. So firstly, if you haven't already, make sure to go ahead and sign up to Lux Algo using my link in the description below. Right now you can get 60% off if you use my link in the description below. Lux Algo is the number one provider of trading indicators worldwide. So go ahead and first sign up to Luxalgo, then you'll be able to utilize this indicator and many others uh, as you'll see here in this video. So with that being said, let's head on over to TradingView here. So I'll also put a link to TradingView in the description below. Uh, and so as you can see today, we're just going to use SPY for the video and we'll use the daily chart here. So the first thing here to understand is how do we add this premium indicator to our chart here? So the first thing we need to do is go to this indicators button on the top and just go ahead and click on it here. And then just type in Lux Algo in here. And so as you can see, a bunch of different premium indicators, there's some free indicators as well, will show up on here. So today I want to talk about this oscillator matrix indicator. So let's go ahead, let's add this to our chart. So I just need to click on it and this will automatically add it to our chart. So if I close out here, you can see the indicator down here now. Now, I'm not going to be able to cover all the features that this one indicator provides because there are a lot of them, but I will cover the main concepts here. Now remember, Luxalgo does have documentation on this indicator and their other indicators on their website. They also have their own videos covering these indicators. So if you want to go more into depth, you can watch those or read through the documentation. But again, I'll try to cover the main concepts here, the main features of this indicator. So the first thing I'm going to cover actually is going to be the smart money flow concept here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into the settings here for this indicator. And I'm going to for now hide the hyperwave feature of this indicator. We'll come back to that here. But this way, we don't have so much stuff showing up here on this indicator at once. And you know, people don't get confused. So I'm again, go ahead and just hide the hyperwave feature of this indicator. And then we'll just have again, the smart money flow to cover here first. So once I do that, you're going to look something you're going to get something that looks like this. So let me go ahead and expand it here a little bit more. So now what you see here, right? You see some green shaded areas. You see some red shaded areas. So again, this is the smart money flow. So of course the green shaded areas tells us money coming in to the market. Red shaded areas tells us money going out of the market. There are also these lines that you see here. So up here, you see these green lines here. You see them here. You see them here down here. You see these red lines. You see here, see it here, over here as well. These are called threshold levels. So if the smart money flow reaches these levels, what that indicates to us is there's significant amount of money coming in or significant amount of money coming out. Now, the way we use the smart money flow and these threshold levels, there's a couple of different ways. So firstly, if the smart money flow here is far away from the threshold, like for example here, right? Here's our money flow, very far away from our threshold level. If you see something like this, this potentially tells us that the market is ranging. You're not going to get huge moves up, huge moves down. You're going to kind of get a little bit up, a little bit down, a little bit up, and you can actually see what price did during this time. 
price didn't do a whole lot, right? It literally traded sideways, right? Same thing, for example, uh, you know, if we go like, you know, for example, here, again, we can see money flow pretty far away from the threshold levels. And what did price do during this time? Really didn't make huge moves. You know, it was basically just trading sideways here, really not moving a whole lot here, right? Now, again, in contrast, where you see the money flow above the threshold level, like we see here, this is again an indication that there is, uh, you know, potentially a significant amount of money coming in, and you could expect to see more of a trending market. So here where the money flow is above the threshold level, we could potentially expect to see the market trending. And so here we have money coming in. And as you can see, again, money flow above the threshold level. So you could expect to see some decent moves up, which as you can see, we did see a pretty big move up here, right? It wasn't just trading sideways like this. Same thing, for example, here. We had uh, the money flow below the threshold level here. So you could expect a trending market here to the downside. There's, you know, there's significant amount of money coming out of the market. And so that's exactly what we saw. It's like pretty swift, quick move down here, not trading sideways like this. So, you know, that's a couple of ways to use this. Now, here is what I believe the key way to use this is, though. So notice that sometimes you see within the shaded region, another shaded region like you see right here or like you see over here, right? This shaded region within the shaded region. So what this tells us is this is there's an overflow during this time period. In other words, an excess of buyers or sellers, potentially people that are getting in late to the market, right? They're getting in late after the market's already made a big move. They want to get a part of it. They get in late. And so they start to, you know, put in all this money or they're selling late, right? And so we get this excess buying, excess selling here. So how do we use something like this? So again, we see one right here, right? We see an example here. So again, you can see the shaded area within this larger shaded area here. One of the key ways to use this is for wait, is to wait for this excess buying or excess selling to stop. And when it stops, you can potentially expect to see a reversal. So notice here, right, when the shaded, this inner shaded area stopped, that means access buyers, you know, there, there was no more access buying here going on. What happened to the market? This is exactly right here where it's where that access buying stopped. What happened? We went from 450 to 430. You can expect a potential reversal. On the other hand here, right, so we, again, we have this inner shaded area. There was an excess of selling here, right? If you would have waited for this excess selling to stop, which was right here, what happened after this? This was right here. We were at around 365. Look at that. Big reversal to 390. That's one key way to use that right there. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and let's add the hyperwave now here. So I'm going to go ahead back into the settings here and let me just reset the settings. And so now this will add the hyperwave feature to this indicator as well. So the hyperwave is going to display momentum in the market here. And again, there's a lot of different ways to use this. I'm going to go over a couple of them here. So we can see the hyperwave, right? It's going to be this, you know, green line. Sometimes it switches to uh, gray, as you can see. So this is the hyperwave here. So one way to potentially use this is when this is below 50, and especially when it's below 20, and you can see right on the right side, there's different values for this. So when we're below 50, so 50 would be a right, you know, around here, when this line is below 50, and especially when we're below 20 here, you can expect to be in a pretty bearish trend, right? You would expect to see pretty big moves to the downside here. So for example, where did we cross 50? 
we crossed 50 let's see here one example was back in let's see right here right so here right price crossed 50 right here you can see this uh, or this uh, line crossed 50 here the hyperwave crossed below 50. notice though as well this was actually where you know this inner shaded area that excess buying also stopped it also coincides when with the hyper wave going below 50. this is when we would expect to see a pretty big move down because we moved below that 50 and we actually eventually i think believe we got yeah below 20 as well here a little bit right now on the other hand when the hyper wave moves above 50 and so for example we saw something like that back in october of 2022 so for example here hyperwave moved above 50 and especially when it moves above 80 you can expect a potential bullish trend potential bullish action so again here not only did the excess selling stop like we talked about already hyperwave moved above 50. So an indication that we're potentially starting a bullish trend, potentially upward movement. And that's exactly what happened here. You can see in a huge move up to the upside here. Now this also, right, this, this uh, hyper wave also shows us these blue and red lines here. So this is divergence. And so the red lines is gonna show us bearish divergence. The blue lines are gonna show us bullish divergence so what do i mean by diver divergence so notice here right this line connecting these two areas here hyperwave had moved up from this time to this time but what did price do from this time to this time price actually moved down right so we had divergence price was moving down but the hyperwave was moving up this was bullish divergence potentially telling us there might be bullish movement. And so what happened after this divergence? Look at SPY, huge move to the upside. And then again, we also have bearish divergence. So the opposite, right? We had uh, the hyper wave here moving down. Same, during the same time frame, we had price going up. So potentially expecting a bearish move here. And exactly, that's exactly what happened. Price pulled back quite a bit here, right? So that's how you could potentially use this indicator. Again, there's a lot more features to it, but I just went over kind of the main features. Uh, they're very useful in my opinion. You should definitely give it a try. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Check out the Discord, a link to that in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think. Now, see you guys next time.